meeting a lot of directors like Bob Fosse and Mike Nichols and Woody Allen and I, I really thought I was going to get some like cool New York movie and suddenly this movie comes along with Ridley Scott who I liked very much. It wasn't until I saw the, de the designs, you know, if you just read the script, it's like Ted Little Indians. Then when I saw the designs, I was like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this before. And I wanted to be a part of it. But even then, I wasn't, you know, I was very laid back. I don't know why, but I was, and I think it made them rather desperate to get me in the end. And, because uh, I was like, oh yeah, I lost my luggage, so, you know, I don't know if I can come in to see the head of the studio. Um, <laughs> I don't know where my head was at. I was, um, and then I was the one person that Ridley um, screen tested in England. He built a whole set for me, and we did all those scenes, which unfortunately are on the DVD. But anyway, um, so, and it really wasn't even, I don't know, it was very slow to fall in love with the story because I didn't know a lot about science fiction, and in the end, I realized I could say a lot of things that were important to me um, through this character. Absolutely. So then, yes, go ahead, Becky. Martin W. from Milton Keynes, England. Wow, are you here? No? Okay. <laughs> Screw that question. No. Um, <laughs> I've heard that during the filming of, of John Hurt's chest pressure scene in the original Alien, in order to capture the maximum dramatic effect, the cast was not fully informed about what was happening. Was that true? Well, it's interesting. This was the one thing that was in the original script by Dan O'Ban, the chestburster idea. And yes, it was in the script, because I remember John Hurt had this line. It was spelled all in caps, oh my boo -ah. and, and it said, this thing came out, it was just so we knew intellectually that that's what would happen. But I, I, we all came down, and the first thing that I noticed was that Dan O'Ban and Raj said were dressed in little raincoats. They were over on the side. <laughs> they were all like... <laughs> they were jumping up and down like it was Christmas. And Ridley and all the, the cameramen were also in these, like, ponchos. And I think that... I think that I... I think for all of us, you know, you see, the, the two things happened. The first was that John Hurt did that first part of the scene where we're just having breakfast and then he suddenly is in agony and, and, and we, we put him on the table and he, you know, all I remember was I thought John was dying. I mean, I just, he was so convincing. I just, uh, everything went out of my head except for my God, John is dying. And then at, at his chest, his t-shirt filled with blood that happened on one take. And then in the next take, honestly, some guys who had a lot of little squeegee bulbs and, and tubes underneath the table, literally, this thing, they changed something. But then this thing poked its head out and went. So you see that master where all of us are like, <laughs> we're not acting. We're like, what just happened? You know? Amazing things. This is without CGI or without puppets or anything. It's just this one little gizmo, and it just turned into that, and then bang! And we were all in shock. It's amazing. It's when you didn't turn to each other, you go, "What the hell was that? You would have screwed up the tape." I, 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 you know, luckily they kept, you know, shooting, but we, I think we were speechless. Otherwise, we would have said that. I think, I think we can all agree that practical effects, that's the way to go, right, guys? And you can. And you can. Joe K. from Mumbai, India. Are you here? As part of the 35th anniversary celebration of Alien, for the first time ever, an action figure is coming out of Lieutenant Ellen Ripley that actually is going to feature your likeness. So, they want to know about the approval process that you had, because obviously today we saw those little 
retro figures. And this is, of course, going to be your first official one. So can you fill us in on how that works and, and you know, how you get approval? And why did you approve this one that's coming out? Yes, I, you know, in the beginning, when they wanted to create these little dolls of all of us, I was just like, you know, what are those for? <laughs> I just, I, I was, I thought I would be like being a little toy. I, I just, you know, the business was so different then. We were just making a movie. We were telling a story. We weren't part of a franchise. I would, you know, the franchise was McDonald's. It wasn't movies. And, um, but then as, you know, really as I got to know the fans and I became more of a fan myself of lots of different movies, I can understand the appeal of having, like, the little dragons from, you know, Game of Thrones and, you know, stuff like that. I'm all for that stuff, and so when they they've actually approached me, they're going to be different size dolls, and um, so you know they I guess went to my agent and you know they had to send me pictures of the doll, and, you know I had to kind of approve the likeness, and um, but you know the guys who do this they're so into it and they're so good at what they do, and I'm sure they're going to be. Should one want a doll? Oh, yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that it has different outfits, like Barbie. <laughs> well, maybe if you're going to watch this later or when they'll hear that. So that that company who's doing it, they are amazing. And those guys, the, pe the people that make those toys, they're artists. They really are. That's it. Well, you're all going to buy one, right? Yeah. And then Sir Gordy will have to come back here again and sign them for you all. It would be my pleasure. And then we can all make outfits for her. If she ever gets out of outer space. I'm envious. I want an action figure. What's up with that? Okay, Warren from Calgary. As we know, Fox Entertainment, as we know with Fox Entertainment, they have a habit of throwing money at the Aliens franchise. And they love doing reboots. So if we were to see an Alien Aliens reboot, who would you like to see? play your character. I'm going to play the character. Um, work 
with yet another amazing director and tell another aspect of this story. So I think I, I could never pick one because each one to me is defined by the director who, who put it together. And each director didn't want to do anything the other director had just done. So they're all so different to me. I, I would never be able to say which one was my favorite, but I, what I loved to do was begin to tell a story over so many different um, films. It was really a, a huge privilege for me. It's perfect, and that leads right into this question. It's perfect. Keith P. from Calgary. Ripley spent three movies being terrorized in the Aliens films, finally to ensure the death of the alien you know, chest burster. How did you approach playing Ripley in Alien Resurrection now that, that she was a hybrid herself? Because obviously it's totally different. They're not after you now, you're in charge. How did you approach that? How did you prepare? I'm not sure I felt they weren't after me because I felt there was also, you know, it's sort of like being with the gorillas. They all have different feelings about you when you're in their midst. So I felt like maybe some aliens were like, oh, right, you know, she's with us now. And others were like, fuck her. <laughs> One of my frustrations would be that, yes, Ripley was cloned, but I'm not sure that I know which side would have won out. And one of the reasons I always wanted to do a fifth one was to see if the human essence of Ripley was strong enough to overcome the alien essence. You actually just answered Neil B's Edmund, from Edmonton's question. He said if uh, uh, the studio gave you $150 million right now when you made Alien 5, what would it be about? So there you go. Could we actually do that? Do you have, can you call somebody? Can we do that? There are a couple of people I can call. So Neil continues to say, I this is a cute question, would Ripley ever be happy settling down with a man or a synthetic partner? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to give her that opportunity to make that decision? I, I, I can, sitting here, I, I can say yes, she would. That's all she ever wanted was just a, a tiny bit of peace and a normal life. Not that I feel that maybe her fate, but I think that was always kind of what she hoped. It was just a modest hope just to live a normal life like everybody else and have be part of a family and, you know, live a day where she's not running and, you know, being terrorized or having to save the day. Lisa H. from Edmonton, if you had not been chosen as Ellen Ripley, do you think the plethora of strong character roles that you've encountered would have come your way? Well, that's interesting. Um, uh, I think in an odd way, after I did Alien, a lot of producer directors didn't think I could do anything else. You know, this happens in the business. If you're successful doing a role, then they kind of send you only that role for the next two years. So I was sent a few, you know, women who would say, all right, people, get over here. I try to avoid those roles. So um, I don't know. I mean, I think I haven't done as many love stories as I would have liked to, maybe because of the Ripley thing. Although Aliens is almost a love story. Um, uh, I don't know. You know, I love. I, I'm very happy with my career. I, I think it's a fairly unconventional career, and it's really what I would have wanted for myself. I also have a bias toward commercial movies. I like being in, in big movies that a lot of people want to see because that's the kind of movie I like to go to. So I feel like whatever happened was perfect, you know? I don't look bad. So what, so then going from that, if you, epic movies, but if you could be in any movie any movie, it doesn't matter, throughout time. Whether in the past, it's like I could have played that role, or in the future, I would love to play this role. 
famous person in history or for something? What's your ultimate dream role? Even if it was on stage, to be anything. Well, I'd certainly, there's certainly a couple of Chekhov plays I'd still like to do. Um, but I, uh, I also, you know, I, I'm actually doing a, an interview about Ingrid Bergman on Tuesday because my first job was with Miss Bergman, and um, it was a great, wonderful thing for me, a wonderful introduction to the business to work with someone as brilliant and gracious and warm and lovely as Ingrid Bergman. And um, so I'm being interviewed by her daughter, uh, Isabella Rossellini, and also by Liv Oldman, who worked with her uh, on a, a Bergman film. Um, and we're talking about Miss Bergman. And I, we just saw, my husband and I just saw Notorious again, which was one of the greatest movies. And her performance is so exquisite in it, that, that it play between loves her and loving him, it just, it's heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. So those roles, which weren't really around when I came up, those great old roles that, that a lot of these actresses got to play, you know, I, I had fun putting my thinking cap on thinking about which one role, those roles I played. Beautiful. You guys should all check out that movie she mentioned. Set of questioning Tarek E. from Edmonton. Science fiction has 